requests all the time on like i don't know if that's normal or what but i'm getting them all the time from all over the world i don't know what's going on it's been happening ever since i got that connection with south africa and uh, with a man that was in zambia as well that helped us with our social media outreach and i don't know what he did but all of a sudden i kept getting friend requests and i'm just maxing out my limit 5,000 friends this 5,000 friends here and I'm getting more and more and more and every once in a while I just you see the person and I'll, and I'll just hit the person and then it comes to their Facebook page eh? so you, it's just you can get lost in the, in the social media world you can just you're starting out with one idea and you get all over the place how did I end up here what am I you know where was I to begin with what was I actually you know watching in, in the first place you know because there's so many it's just a freeway, really it is. It's just lots of different directions you can take. So anyway, I just friend request and I I put on the picture, it went to their Facebook page. And then it was a lady that happened to be in one of my meetings in Cape Town in uh, in Mitchell's Plain and she had recorded the whole revival service. I have never seen it. I just knew I preached there. And I thought, well, she has that on her, uh, posted on her, on her, Facebook page. And uh, so I watched the whole meeting over again. <laughs> I thought, wow. I thought, man, but did we ever have a good time? Did we ever shake that? And God is just showing me the fruit, you know, and how his word does not return void and how, you know, when you sow, it grows. God gives the increase. If you release it, God will take care of it. Eh? You can commit it unto the Lord and you can trust in him and, and he will take it where it needs to go. He'll put his super on your natural and so i'm like wow and then uh <laughs> oh yeah all the people we prayed for and, and uh, i was uh, i was quite amazed at what god was doing there and we just had meetings every night in every place different places all over cape town and we went to atlantis and then we went to wooster and musenberg and nice places not so nice places all kinds of places just everywhere, just in such a small vicinity. And, uh, you know, and then I'm in a mall, it's all marble. And then I'm in a tin shack with a few people leading people to the Lord. And it was just astounding. And I had, praise God, Prophet Clement with me, taking good care of me and, and uh, helping me to get around and connecting me with people. Like the ministry's built on relationships. And I established a lot of really good relationships, such as Mary and Cutie in Pakistan. It's built on relationships. It's built on hearing faith in the cries of people. Faith draws God into the scene. Like the persistent widow, you know, and Jesus, will I find faith? Well, I find people that are praying that really mean they want something from God. They really want an answer. They're not going to go away unless they get an answer. And Jesus never forbid people for being bold like that. He says, to anyone who comes to me, I will not cast out. Jesus was never intimidated by bold faith and requests that were bizarre and beyond the ability of man to meet. So Jesus was actually quite excited. The meeting just got started when he started to see faith. Like he was kind of getting bored teaching to all these theologians because they were just arguing with him anyway, you know. And he says, what difference does it make if I say be healed or your sins are forgiven? That you may know the Son of Man has the power on the earth to forgive sins and, and heal sicknesses. And if you don't know that, being a, a religious Jew, then I'm looking for faith. I'm looking for true believers. And so, yeah, as soon as the roof started cracking open and somebody was bringing their friend down on the stretcher there, a group of his friends, relationships. You know, your healing is built on relationships too. People will help you in the love of God to get your healing. You know, they love you so much. Look at the effort that they put in. They had faith too. It wasn't just a man that Jesus seeing their faith. There was a corporate faith. There was a group faith. They were all in it to get their friend healed. And so they brought him to the meeting and, and Jesus right away says, oh, wow, that's exciting. You know, I was getting bored because all the Pharisees and Sadducees and all the religious people were taking up all the seats. So the guy couldn't even get a seat. So they came in through a roof and uh, Jesus had a word for them. And that was the purpose of that whole meeting was for that one person that had faith. 
Yeah. Faith gives purpose. And so the just shall live by faith. So they were justified before Jesus in having that kind of faith that he could respond to them and give them what they asked for. God can make it happen. God can answer prayer. God can answer faith. It started out with prayer, but Jesus said, when the Son of Man comes, will he find prayer? He didn't say that. He said, will he find faith? Because it started with the persistent widow, but her prayer wasn't any ordinary prayer. It was a prayer of faith that God heard and responded to. And so Jesus, why he didn't say he was looking for prayer when he came, because there's all kinds of prayer. Religious people all pray. All religions pray. Christianity has its prayer, you know. And uh, But God has a prayer that's accepted called the prayer of faith. James said, if anyone's sick among you, let them call for the elders. See, the elders are, are people that know how to pray and have faith in the prayer. Praying and faith together is what Jesus is coming back for and the fruit of it, the fruit of prayer and faith, the fruit of prayer, prayer and faith. So, so prayer and faith produces the fruit of the activity that we see happening in the world today. So Jesus has given us a, a real uh, unveiling the veil for us to see what's behind the scenes of God's activity on the earth. There's persistence, there's prayer, there's faith, and then there's the work of the Lord that follows. Because God working with them, confirming his word with signs and wonders. And so let's go to Mark chapter 10 here. And so when I first met Mary, and uh, we had unity right from the beginning in the spirit. Same kind of faith. Second Peter chapter 1. To you that have obtained like precious faith. And so looking for relationships with like precious faith. Together in one accord, believing the power of the Lord. And so the relationship that was established there, just listening to her. You know, something happened in the spirit realm with that connection. There was a miracle there that happened. There was a grace that was released in that relationship that empowered her and empowered me and empowered us and empowered everyone in the work. So just listening to her, and then she sends me videos of her preaching and God's grace is upon her and anointing is upon her. And, you know, I get these videos of her preaching, but she's preaching but she always sends me the part of the video where she's actually singing and worshiping in Pakistan, in, in Hoodoo, or Urdu language. And, uh, oh, see, before she gets preaching, she's just got the mic and she's singing and she's declaring and she's proclaiming and praying, praying. And so that's why a lot of the, we, we call them revival meetings here. You know what they call them there? Same thing, they call them prayer meetings, you see. Like Jesus called it prayer, but it was actually a revival meeting, but it, it was the prayer of faith that God responded to and visited. He visited their prayer of faith. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord will raise them up. If anyone's sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. And that's what elders are. They're equipped believers with the grace of God to pray the faith that knowing that Jesus took our sicknesses in his body on the tree. And so the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up. So we can see prayer and faith and God raising up. All in that one equation. Same as that, what you shared in that story. Prayer, faith, and God moving and changing the situation for her favor. You know? And so sometimes we look at that that story, and we all think we're the persistent widow. But sometimes we're just like that stubborn, hard-hearted judge. Because people are telling us how excited they are about Jesus, and we really don't want to connect with it. We really don't want to believe it right away. You know, it was like Mary just sharing all these great things that God had put in her heart, you know. And either I'm going to be like that judge, or I'm going to be like the person of faith and prayer. I have to choose. What side am I going to be on in the situation? What side are you on when you read that? Do you find yourself in this situation of that woman that's praying to believe God for something and God answering? Because I'll tell you, our prayers in faith 
knowing that it's the will of God by Jesus' grace, will wear the devil out before it'll wear us out. Persistent prayer wears the devil out. He just, and yet, those things, many people think it's God. And Jesus knew that people thought that it was God that was the problem. And they're praying to God. They're actually, they're, they're, they're praying for God to remove the resistance that's coming from the enemy. It's not God that's resisting. It's God that wants to release all his blessing and all his grace and all his love. And he did that through the propitiation of Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. We were not trying to appease an angry God. God was never angry in the first place, but he had to do things right in order to justly release his blessing on us as if we had never sinned because God is a just God. He's not an angry God. He's a just God. You know, Charles Spurgeon said, you know, God's nature is love, but his office is judgment. You know, and so that judgment was appeased by Christ Jesus on the cross. So all the negative things that should have come to us went on Jesus on the cross. All my judgment for sin went on Jesus so that the positive power, just like the natural current of electricity, has a positive and a negative. For a cycle to be complete, you've got to have a positive and a negative. And so that's what our life like is with God. All the negative goes on the cross of Jesus and all the positive comes from the throne of God's grace and glory. So we come to God's grace with boldness in the revelation of the propitiation of the cross of Jesus and his finished work for us on Calvary. And so that was what God had to do so he could release the love that he's always had for me and you. He's always had love for us, but he had to be just. So they had to always come every year with their sacrifices. And now there's no more sacrifice for sin because Jesus died once and for all, having obtained eternal redemption for us. So now we look into the perfect law of liberty, not the perfect law of condemnation and judgment. Our law is liberty today. And that's why when the veil's taken away and we can see Jesus, faith comes. Faith comes by the word of God. Jesus is the word of God. He's the author and the finisher. Jesus released faith to people because he was going to die for the sins of everyone to have a right relationship with God once again. And God answers by faith. And so sometimes, you know, Mary's, first of all, it just started with a relationship of winning souls, a relationship of preaching the gospel, an opportunity to do crusades in in, in Fazlabad, Pakistan. And so she set these all up, and it all started with a small seed. The kingdom of God, when it is sown, it's smaller than all the seeds. But now it's getting bigger than a lot of trees that are in Pakistan. No, it started with a small seed, a small seed of joining our faith together for the gospel to be preached to them in Pakistan. And uh, so we had opportunities there, and as we kept obeying the Lord and kept giving ourselves to that in faith, then it kept growing and kept growing and kept growing and kept growing and kept expanding. And she kept coming to me and I had to, I had to, I had to accommodate her faith. I'm thinking to myself, what kind of a lady is this? I'm thinking to myself to God. She's just talking and going and going and going. I go, I go, Lord, we gotta help this lady, God. We've got to help her. We can't be like that judge, you know? We've got to be favorable to her because she means business and so god works with them that means business the last verse in mark after god had jesus had commissioned them to go into all the world and preach the gospel wait in jerusalem till you receive power from on high and you shall be my witnesses in jerusalem judea and to the uttermost parts of the earth i took a while for them to get to the uttermost parts It even took more grace for Peter to repent and to believe, yeah, that Jesus meant God so loved the world. He really meant the world. He didn't just mean Jerusalem and Judea. He meant the world. And Peter didn't want to go to Cornelius' house, but God had to set it up with an angel to get him to do his will. And so Peter finally got into the will of God by being revealed by, by God in that vision. And so even Peter, you know, there was a lot of religious bondages that had to be broken over his life. Even when he went into Cornelius' house, the first thing he had to say was something stupid. It wasn't from the Lord at all. Did you know that I'm not even supposed to be in your house? Jesus never told him to say that. That was his own dumb words. You know, and here he was getting religious again, getting stuffy and getting kind of, you know, 
pompous in his Jewishness and his religion. And he said in a vision, oh, Lord, I'll never eat anything that's unclean. No, no, those dirty dog Gentiles. Jesus was like, were you not with me for three years? Were you not there when I answered the Roman centurion? Were you not there when the Syrophoenician came to me and I said, I haven't seen this kind of faith in all of Israel? And I responded to her faith and I gave her her miracle. Were you not there? And here you are afraid to go into a Gentile's house. And I was there for everybody, Jew and Gentile. But I came for the lost house of Israel to begin with. I came unto my own and my own received me not. But for as many as received me, to them gave me power. I gave them power to become. I gave them excusia, authority to be. I gave them the authority of my atonement, just like in the in in, in Israel. I gave them the day of atonement. The day of atonement came to the Gentiles through Jesus. Hallelujah! And so Jesus, He said, "Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest." But the church was the believing remnant of Israel. The early church was all Israel. They were all Jews. So let's not be too hard on the Jews. They were all Jews. But God had to get them to be Jews that had faith in the word of God. Hey, so Peter, you know, had to be uh, set up by God to go into Cornelius and do the will of God. God has works for us to do that he's got to set us up for. Preparation precedes manifestation. So there's seasons of preparation. There's seasons of manifestations. There's seasons of receiving. There's seasons of giving. And we have to understand that. Praise God. You know when you have grace to do something, you just got to do it. The grace is on you. That works with me in every area of life, like even in fixing cars, you know. There's a lot of things that I just don't feel like doing, but I know God's going to get me around to doing it. I'll just trust in him. I'll get around to doing it. There's so many things to do in life, but God has a divine order for everything. Praise God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. You know, God does the adding. We do the seeking. Hallelujah. And so, and the believing. And so Mary was talking. And so first it started out with uh, getting, uh, was it lights first? Or was it, it was a sound system first. I need a sound system. Like she really believed in us, believing in her, and we were going to do something great for Jesus. Really believing in that. And her believing was manifested in her physical activity. She really meant it. She wasn't just talking and not walking. She'd be talking, and all of a sudden, I see her there expecting it. I said, well, i got to. And I've had to send the money. We've had to send the money to her just in the nick of time to go and pay for it. And the next day was the revival meeting where they were on load sharing because the lights would go out. So we, we, we supplied her with a light system, supplied her with a sound system. We're supplying her faith, and her faith is getting on us for the nations. Praise God, because she's a Pakistani, and we're Canadians, and we're together in the kingdom of God as one. This world belongs to us. Amen? Didn't God say to Abraham that the world was his? The world was his. Praise God. So the world is ours. And it just started where we were at. We just did what we could with what we had. We had a little bit of faith and a little bit of money and a little bit of obedience. And now we can see the great work of the Lord working in Pakistan. I believe this is going to just, this seed is growing and growing and growing and spreading branches. And people are coming and getting shade and getting words of life and words of truth. And she's preaching and God's raising up missionary ambassadors in Pakistan that there's no distance in faith, no distance. Hallelujah. So that's exciting. And then she keeps coming up with more. And the last thing, I had no idea that she was even thinking this. She's way ahead of me. I'm just there. I'm just helping her, you know. I'm just her assistant. And, you know, that, that's what Jesus was like, you know. What can I do for you? How can I help you? And blind Bartimaeus said, I want my sight. See, Jesus wasn't thinking about that very much. Not until that guy started talking about it. You know, Jesus doesn't know what you really want. You've got to voice your wants to God. Amen? Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe you receive them, you shall have them. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will. Like, God doesn't know what you want until you ask him. I mean, he could know what you want, but he doesn't go in and endeavor into that area until he sees you expressing it. And then when he sees faith, uh, he meets you with his power. 
And so, praise God, I have no idea. And then the last time I'm talking to Mary, she's already got a, a, you know, a whole vision packed into this thing. Yeah, I'm going to get land and a house and, and, and a business and everything. Oh, business. Big business. Oh, I, I had no, and I, I'm just, I don't need to know everything. I really don't need to know everything. Amen. Jesus doesn't need to know everything. He just needs to know what you're praying for, right? I mean, there's a lot of times where you just don't need to know everything. You just need to know it's God. I was in Mexico in, uh, in Mananero and in, in Ensenada and then in the wilderness desert where there was a boy's home uh, that was leaded by a, by a visionary, an apostolic faith leader, you could call him, anyone who starts out in a work of the Lord that's apostolic. Apostolic just means sent out. So he was in the correctional prison system for years and years. And uh, he had a vision uh, to help these young boys that were getting sent to prison for crime so they wouldn't be in with all the hardcore criminals. He wanted to have a transitional center out in the wilderness where he could help these boys get right with God and get strengthened, get restored, you know. And uh, that uh, he had a heart. He didn't want to see them go into a prison with all the, all the others. And so he, just like the widow, he approached the prison system in Mexico. He kept banging it banging and banging and believing and believing and believing. And they said, okay, we'll send all the kids to you. Well, he had no money. He just had the vision. And then a Canadian came by and said, well, how much is it going to cost to do this? And he told them, he says, I'll be back in one year to pay for it all. So you know what he did? He believed the guy. <laughs> and he went and he started, you know, just building in the middle of a desert. Got an electrical system there, got a water system there, got some chickens and cows there, you know. Got some dorms there, got some houses there, got a little prison there. And so they, they, they answered. God answered his prayer through the correctional there. They allowed him to, to have this program running that they would send all these kids that are holding up taco stands and stuff, you know, all kinds of deals. We went there. And the only thing that that man wanted to know that was going to finance the whole thing was, did you hear from God? Are you sure you heard from God? Well, if I didn't hear from God, I wouldn't be doing all this crazy stuff that nobody would do unless they heard from God. And he says, okay, I believe you. I'll be back in a year with the money. So a year comes along and the guy's not there. Everybody's mocking at him and laughing at him and he's got bills stacking up the sky high, you know. And he says, oh no, that guy, he'll show up. He said he would. He gave me his word, he'll show up. And then the guy never showed up for a week, and another week goes on, and, and before you know it, everybody is just attacking his faith, the trying of his faith. So he had to have patience, patience and faith to inherit the promises. So he had patience. And the guy showed up with all the money and paid for everything. And, you know, I think God set that up so everybody could see around him that this man was a man of God, you know, that, that you know, things don't always come easy. They don't always come easy. There's a fight of faith involved. Eh? Right? As soon as you set out to go to the other side, sometimes a big storm comes up suddenly. And it'll try whether you're going to be determined to still go to the other side or you're going to turn around, bail out, and go into unbelief again. Are you going to go back into unbelief? Or are you going to say, we're going forward because God told us to? And so praise God. And so Mary's now got this vision. And we said, yeah, it'll happen. God will provide. It's exciting because it's motivated by grace. It's motivated by grace. Grace motivates, faith takes. And the grace that's motivating this whole project is the healing of whole of lives. Like you were talking about in Corinth, the people that give you those letters about how they've been changed by the power of God and the love of God and the, the love of God's people. And so the grace of God that's motivating us is to see the power of the good news of Jesus coming into the lives of Pakistan so that they can rejoice in Christ Jesus more abundantly. And so she's got all these crowds just roaring for Jesus. And I like to get involved in something that has faith and action. 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 Faith is a fact, but faith is an act. Hallelujah. So and I don't even know how we we're going to do this at first with the government. And, and really, I was really attacked by worry and everything because we have never done anything in this church ever. There's never been a world missions outbreak like this from here. But the Lord put it in our hearts years ago. 
years ago, even in those intercessory prayer meetings, we had that thing going on in, in victory. It's because when God puts something in you, he will complete it. He will begin it and he will complete it. And, and so we always believed in touching the nations and asking God for the nations. And so the Lord responds to the faith of a woman named Mary. Hallelujah. And that's a story you can put in the Bible right there. It's just like the one you read. And now, you know, the release is there and the favor is there. And, and you know, she's got favor with Pakistan too. Very, it's just phenomenal. A woman like that that's got favor. The men, they, they want her to preach. They, they, they use her because she's anointed. And so they get behind her as some kind of a false sense of security in the, in, in the, in the legal system, in the religious system, because of their uh, system is all uh, favors the, the male figures, you know. And yet the male figures know that, but they're going there just to satisfy the demands of justice and then get her to preach <laughs> because she's anointed. And so they love her. It's amazing. And, and, and uh, just like that tree, that tree that fell on Dave's car and never touched it. It's just like this woman is indestructible. All kinds of things. Like she's traveling on a motorbike late at night in really bad places in Muslim strongholds. If they caught her, they could kill her and throw her in a ditch and nobody would even know it. But the trees keep falling and never hitting her. They do. She was in a rickshaw before we bought her a motorbike. We bought her a motorbike. And now she wants a car. We're going to get her a car too. It'd be a lot better for her to drive around in a truck. Her and her husband, then they can they have more cargo to carry, and they got a sound system, they got Bibles, and 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 Bibles were given out to New Testaments to everyone there that receives Jesus as Lord. Hallelujah. And so Psalm 91 really is true, isn't it? A thousand will fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. She was in a rickshaw and she got into an action, like a, a car smashed her, and she rolled out of the rickshaw could have been run over by a truck, broke her leg, and got healed on the video. She broke her leg. She was in the hospital. And then she calls me. And so we prayed for her. And she got healed. She believed she was healed anyway and got right out of the hospital and got back on the road again and, and ended up preaching the next day. And her, her leg is perfectly healed. No broken bone. Oh, I got hit by a car, Jeff. Oh, I'm in the hospital. She was in the hospital, I don't know how many times, and God keeps getting her out, and she's right back there. This woman is persistent, and uh, she trusts in God to take care of her, and she's got five children, too, in school. So this is, she's a mother of five or six, and her husband, they're a husband and mom team, and Wakas, her, her husband, he's excited. you got to meet him. He's a funny guy. He's, he's right into it with her, helping her, and... They drive in a motorbike, the two of them, a 125 Honda with all their Bibles and everything, and they go to these places around Fazlabad. And then we have baptism services too where we baptize people in water. So I'm excited about this. This really is something that's happening that I like being involved in. I'm so thankful to God for, for being able to meet her. And then, and then Sister Cutie, praise God, another persistent woman of faith for children, for an orphanage, for a children's home, even in the midst of, you know, of terror where they're abducting childs and selling their body parts to other countries. And, they're, and, and all the ones that kidnapped our children got caught and our children came back to the home. So anyone that's taken from our home, they got protection. That tree doesn't hit them. Praise God. So they come in, you know, with face coverings on and stuff. And, they, and, and I didn't even know this was happening. I had no idea. You see, I'm just working with their faith. I'm not knowing all the details of everything they're doing. But I believe in giving into this because it's fruitful, it's good ground, and you've got faithful ambassadors of Christ that are working the work. People you can trust and rely on. Praise God. We've been with them how long, how long now? A couple years, I think, that we've, we started this. And uh, it started with a testimony of a miracle boy that was naked, running around demon-possessed. And there was a name that was given to him that nobody wants to say because it was so vulgar and so obscene. But they found this boy and prayed and brought deliverance to him in the name of Jesus. And he was in his right mind and fully clothed. And they changed his name to Joseph. Hey, isn't that a love story? Isn't that a love story? They rescued a kid that everybody was, nobody loved, nobody wanted. 
He was just running loose on the streets, naked. Isn't that? That happens in those places. I had never seen anything like it in my life. I said, but I had faith. We've got so much faith here. We've got so much preparation here in Canada to do the works of God like never before where they need it in other countries like Pakistan. Praise God. They need it here in Canada, but we'll just go wherever they will receive us. And they're receiving us right now. So the only reason I'm in there is because that was the door that was open. I would have been anywhere else if it was open. I'd be in Colombia. We'd be anywhere. But that was the place God had, had called us. So if he calls us to Colombia, we'll go there too. But you know what? I believe. Is Colombia South America? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't know why, but it's coming too. It's coming. Colombia is coming to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Do you want to play that prophecy of Russ Moyer? You know, it's in Elvin's What's Up. Maybe you don't have Elvin's What's Up on there, do you? Well, if you can find it, I'll just keep going. But if you can find it, well, everything came to pass in his prophecy that we're doing now, except for South America. I'm thinking of my Lord. Lord, South America, he said they would be coming from South America. There'd be a South American connection somewhere. Well, I've gotten far as Mexico, but not South America yet. So, but I just leave it up to the Lord because you just know when it's the Lord and you know when to go. You know when to stay, you know when to go. Hey, you know when to receive, you know when to give. It's just a cycle of the Lord. So here's Mark chapter uh, 10, verse 46. And they came to Jericho, Jesus and his disciples. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, all the disciples are so messed up. Thank God for the grace, eh? They don't know what side to be on half the time. They don't know if they should be on the stubborn judge's side or they should be on the persistent widow's side. Sometimes they're on the side with Jesus and sometimes they're on the side, you know, of the resistance to Jesus. So here they are, you know, in their ignorance, trying to hold back what Jesus wanted to do because they couldn't handle the unconventional noise of a crying world for needs from God. Couldn't handle the unconventional. Couldn't handle the cry. Couldn't handle the faith. Couldn't handle the desperation of people coming to Jesus. They were too religious to handle the messy stuff. They wanted everything to be nice and clean and pristine. They just didn't want to be able to believe God for people to get their needs met by faith. So here's the disciples trying to send this guy away that was not meant to be sent away. And so too many of us give up too soon because of religious resistance. Form of godliness that denies the power. They don't want you having faith. They just want you having a religious intellectualism. But this doesn't work in this kind of a scenario. Religious intellectualism doesn't work in this kind of a setting. What works in this kind of a setting is hardcore love and faith, which works in the hope of God giving people their healing, God giving people their desired request. Let's read this and that'll be it for today. This is the chapter that comes before 11. Maybe next week we'll get into 11. And the Lord has been talking to me about teaching on the parable of the sower in Mark chapter 4. So I hope. Thank you, Lord. You know, most of the manifestation is in the preparation. All the harvests are in the seed and, and hearing the word properly will bring a harvest into your life, a harvest of faith, a harvest of love, a harvest of the will of God. It's all hinged on our attitude towards his word. That's what the parable of sower is about. That the kingdom of God is explained in that parable, Jesus said. If you know this parable, you'll know the mysteries of the kingdom. The mysteries of the kingdom are in understanding how God does things through his word if we carry it and bring it to full fruition. It's the word that's working mightily in us. And that's where the work comes from, from the word and uh, for the world. 
And so the Lord was telling me about teaching on that, and then maybe I think chapter 11 will be next week on, uh, on faith. But 10 is leading up. 10 is the dawn of real biblical faith. Here's Jesus showing what real faith is and how God is pleased by it. For it is written, Without faith it's impossible to please God. For they that come to him must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Diligently seeking God is sometimes a foreign understanding because diligently seeking God in Bible days was a radical pressing in to Jesus. The woman at the, with, the, with the issue of blood. This is diligently seeking. It's not ordinary religious intellectualism. This is diligently seeking because they see Jesus as their healer. They see Jesus as their blessing. They see Jesus as their yes and amen to the promises of God. All the promises of God. So when we preach, we don't preach yes and no. We preach yes and amen to all the promises that are in God through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So the, the gospel is a, a word of assurance. It doesn't come with a yes or a no or a maybe. It doesn't come. It comes that God is yes. And if you believe him, you can have all things. All things are possible for them who believe like Jesus taught. So we don't come with a, with a, with a mixed up, muddied, watered message. The gospel is a yes and an amen to all who believe. And Pakistan is believing. They're believing and they're getting the yes and amen from God coming down to them. The outpouring of the Spirit's coming down to them. Healing is coming down to them. Salvation is coming down to them. Faith is coming down to them. And God wants more coming down to them that he wants to establish a house there where they can be taught the word of God, they can be established in the word of God, and they can be sent out into their own nations to take Pakistan. Let the Pakistanis reach Pakistan with the gospel of Jesus, and we're assisting for God's word to be planted there. Praise God, and it will produce a harvest of ambassadors for Jesus in Pakistan. And not only that, there's so much work going on in Fazlabad. Peter Youngren's going there here this month, next month, November. Is that the 31st today? Yeah, 30th. Well, in November, he's going to Fazlabad. There's a lot of good work going on there because God sees the faith in Pakistan. He sees the prayer. So they're big on prayer there, but God's putting the super into their natural. See, the prayer's pretty mundane and boring and just religious, most of it. But God sees the effort. And if he puts their faith, if he puts their extra on their ordinary, just ordinary prayers, their prayers are being dynamically changed by the Spirit of God into being prayers that are heard by God to send down the rain from heaven in Pakistan. Not the kind of rain that destroys either. Not that kind of rain. But the kind of rain that restores. <laughs> restores, not destroys. So here, let's just read this. Did you find it? Okay, we're going to listen to that. And that'll be enough for today. We had enough good faith talk today, didn't we? We had enough good testimonies. We had enough. I think we had lots of good teaching already, didn't we? And so, this is from 2011 when we started here, eh? Yeah, and we have not been, you know, by the grace of God, we've been obedient to that heavenly vision. We've been obedient to say, God, just use us. We're here. But you have to be the redeemer. You have to be the savior. You have to be the healer. You have to be the empowerer. And so God is all that to us, isn't he? He is all that. Hey, it's not our ability. It's our availability that God works with. Hallelujah. You're the you're here you're at this church. church. You, up, you, you had up your earlier. Could you stand, stand up there for me? me? Let's, Let's stretch, stretch our hands, hands for that, brothers and sisters. I believe that that's the call of God that's on your life, that there's a pioneering call that's on you. And to bring forth one new man. Is to bring, bring forth, forth a, a wide variety of things. And as, as I, I look, look out, I look, look at all different cultures in front of me. I, I see people of all different types and colors, sizes and shapes, 
very, very unusual, unusual looking church. church. I, see I see people coming from the highways and the byways. I see, I see immigrants coming in. I see, I see some from South America. I see some from the Far East. I see, I see all different colors and backgrounds, and I see them communicating and talking and fellowshipping. And I see barriers coming down right before my eyes. I see that there are all little boxes around these people, and people have put them all in a little box in the tight. And I see the boxes just falling down around. And this is only the beginning. The Lord said you put a vision in your heart. The Lord, the Lord said, said he's going to birth something in you shortly that's it's going to have to do with partnering and fellowship and connecting with. with. The Lord, the Lord said, said get ready for some golden connections, connections some the right relationships. Get, get ready for something new, something special to happen in the days ahead. For this is the hour, says the Lord, for the vision to begin to unfold. There's, There's also been, been some financial things and some lack things and some, some people within your midst that have been struggling. The Lord says, sister, that there's anointing on your life to bring forth the vision. And the Lord said it's going to be, uh, it's going to be something that begins to happen quickly. And he said he wants you to begin now to gather your faith together to begin to pray for those. And I see many of them that are struggling with cultural things that are, uh, that, 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 that are uh, trying to be rectified. And now I see you laying down like a bridge. Connecting cultures and young and old and different culture groups and, and, and people that are struggling with trying to find their place in this land. And that's, that's all part, part of what God's going to do in this house. The Lord says it's going to be a house of worship. The Lord says it's going to be a house of liberty, a house of deliverance. The Lord says there's going to be some new things to begin to break forth with people that have identity issues, even from their childhood, and the generational things are going to be dealt with in this place, says the Lord. Get ready for a mission focus and an outreach focus. Get ready to see things beginning to go to other places. And teams, teams to begin to raise up. And I see a great vastness and emptiness, and I see things, things filling up very quickly. And then I see a breaking out that comes. And this breaking out is going to have to do not so much with expanding the building, or but expanding the vision. And then a breaking out from an old vision into something new and something very dynamic, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. One Amen. I mean, he even said, you know, bridge, you know, and golden connections, and I see a bridging, and, you know, and we, just like I said, it's all built on relationships, golden connections. It's just based on uh, people having unity in the spirit and the oneness of Christ, and all these identities just being healed, and the box is being open, and one new person in Christ together in one accord so that there's uh, such love there for God to break down all the barriers of cultures and to bring us into the unity of what God wants to do. And so we're Bridge Ministries International, and that was before. He, he prophesied everything right to the detail and even used some of those words, eh? Mission focus and all that, except for South America. Far East, it's there now, right? So, yeah. so, so it's so wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. And so that was the encouraging word, a uh, prophecy. And we're a prophetic people because we're in the, the will of God in his word. So God has a, has a good plan. And his plan is found in Jesus for our, our salvation and healing and deliverance. You know, I might not make a big deal with El Capone, but I'll make a big, big deal with people. You know, I mean, everybody's worried about the evil that's around us. And I might not get rid of all the evil, but I will be able, I'll deliver people from the evil. You know, let the devil rot in hell all by himself. You know, like... Plundering how to populate heaven, isn't that the thing? And so, you know, I'm not going to try to get rid of all the evil in the world, but I'm just going to reach people out of that evil. I'm going to bring them out like God brought me out. He brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light to show forth his praises. That we should hold forth the word of life in a wicked and perverse generation, right? We should hold forth the word of life. We can't change all the evil, but we can make a difference one at a time for the people that will hear the good news of Jesus Christ. 
I got lots of testimony of people coming out of darkness into his marvelous light because we're light and we just bring people into our light, into the love and into the hope that's in Christ Jesus. So, you know, I might not make big difference how many people are following, but Al Capone is going to be unemployed. Amen. Praise God. You know, we can certainly unemploy the devil's crowd by reaching them with Jesus, can't we? Amen. I'm unemployed now. Thank God I'm unemployed. The devil don't, you know, unemployed from the serving the enemy, right? He lost me. The devil lost me. Uh, he had me. I was working for him. I was serving him. And now I'm living for Jesus and serving Jesus. And his grace is sufficient for us. We've been saved by grace. And we will continue on in grace from faith to faith until the coming of the Lord. The Lord that's begun a good work in us, he is not done. He's just begun. Hallelujah. So we just want to encourage you in the faith that God has put in your heart to live for Jesus, to follow after righteousness and call upon his name. And maybe I'll close with Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. Because <laughs> it's 2022. At the beginning of 2022, you know what the Lord said to me when I was praying? He says, good news, 2022. 2022 is a good news year. And that's all we've been sharing in 2022 is good news. We're not talking about all that other stuff that they've been talking on the media. We're talking good news here. We're talking faith and victory here. So God says, just keep on preaching good news in 2022. And so 2022, good news. Hebrews 10.22 says, let us approach the Lord. Let us come boldly to his throne of grace. And we'll close with this because God is, I'm closing, but he's just opening. So I'll open with this and then leave. <laughs> I hate to say closing. When does the Lord ever close? He's open 24-7, isn't he? He's like 7-Eleven. And then I looked up, Matthew 7 11. Because I worked at 7 Eleven in Vancouver in the hood. And uh, I thought, boy, I'm working at 7 Eleven. I wonder what 7 Eleven says in Matthew. And you know what 7 Eleven is? If you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Father in heaven give good things to them that ask him? I thought, yeah, that's 7 Eleven, Father. That's 7 Eleven. You know, in the natural and in the spirit, 7 Eleven. And so, praise God. I work with numbers when they, when they work. When they work. When they don't work, I don't, I don't just pick a number. Judas went out and hung himself. No, I'm not going to work with that one. Amen. You've got you to have spiritual discernment when you're, you're doing these things. Because the word of God is always the higher authority on everything. You know, on prophecy. So, okay, here we go. 22. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith. We're going into 23 too, right? Let us hold fast the profession of our faith. What are we going to do in 23? We're going to hold fast. We're going to hold fast. We're going to be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in 2023. Just to give you a heads up on that. Because that's what God has for us in 2023. The overflow of good news without wavering for he is faithful that promised father god we just thank you lord that you are faithful you are faithful in your promises to us you're faithful in in jesus to us you're faithful in your word to us we thank you father god you're faithful in our faith to us and you're faithful in the hope that we have in the glory of god we thank you lord that we can hold fast our confession and profession that we can draw near to you with a true heart and full assurance of faith because you're faithful and i thank you for meeting all the needs in this house god thank you for strengthening everyone here today lord god that are weary let them have strength in you let the strength of your mighty power lord god work inside oh to build us up in our most holy faith as we pray in the Holy Ghost and as we believe your word today. We thank you, Father God, for renewing us. 
reviving us. Thank you for the times of refreshing that come from your presence today. We acknowledge you and we ask your love to bless everyone here today, that they will carry your great light, they'll carry your anointing, that they will carry your grace to the nations. In Jesus' name, and everyone that couldn't be here, Lord God, reach out your hand and touch them now. Touch them and bless them and strengthen them, Father God. And we thank you for upholding this church. Thank you for upholding with your righteous right hand. Hallelujah. All those that are far and all those that are near, all those that the Lord has called, your promise, Father God, is near. Hallelujah. And you have called us, Father God, and in your calling there is grace, mind, life, and peace. As many as the Lord shall call, there is an anointing upon that calling. There is a, an anointing of the Spirit of God that your calling is confirmed by the Spirit of the Lord. That the Spirit of God bears witness with your spirit today that you are His and He is yours. In Jesus' name, amen.